Joe. Joe on Joe is the only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hey, welcome back to Joe on Joe. It's me, your host, Joe Slepsky, and this is the only podcast where we watch every episode of G.I. Joe, a real American hero in sequential order and comment on it mystery science style. Man, are you guys in for a treat this week? I am sitting next to a friend, a talent. Uh, she's a, she's an amazing force out here in Hollywood. She's a storyteller. <laughs> she's a writer. She's a producer. She is someone to keep your eye on and someone that you guys can follow from the comfort of your own home because this is Nikki Levy. Hello. And she is the creator of a amazing storytelling show out here in Los Angeles called Don't Tell My Mother. It's been it's played in New York, it's played in San Francisco, I want to say mm-hmm. Portland or something Chicago. like that. Chicago. Chicago for sure. Florida. 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 And and its home base is out here in Hollywood. She's yep. got a show coming up on October 12th at the LGBT Center in Hollywood. So if you're out here, you need to check that out. But please welcome to Joe on Joe, Nikki Levy. Nikki, welcome to Joe on Joe. This is great. First of all, first of all, thanks for having me. Second of all, this makes me so nostalgic for the 80s. Yeah. And the 80s were not a good time for me. <laughs> <laughs> they really weren't. But, but I was a kid who would like wake up and watch cartoons and I you couldn't tear me away from them for like I would do for four hours so this even just looking at your screen right now and looking at the logo and the G.I. Joe logo I mean honestly like it it makes me nostalgic in a really good way I am fascinated I loved it. I'm fascinated by shared experiences and the fact that we don't have that anymore at least <laughs> at least the Saturday morning thing was as it turns out to be a generational thing what time because, was the show on do you remember well, G.I. Joe was on after school because G.I. Joe was on every day during the week. Yep. Um, and yeah. so, it, it actually, once it went into reruns, there were, like, Channel 9 would, would air it early in the morning, too. Yeah. But, but re, like, original first run stuff, you're looking at, like, 3.30-ish. Yeah, that that's what I remember because I I went to, I'm from Queens, you know, yeah. in New York. And represent Queens. Queens. Represent Queens. Queens. Not a Brooklyn. I kind of, like, lie and tell people I'm just from New York and I omit Queens, but... I'm indeed from Queens. If you're so, I um, uh, I'm not familiar with. Is that a, if you're in New York and you say that and someone calls you on it, have you committed a treason? Or oh, something? a little because if you say like if so, if you're like, oh, I'm from New York, and someone's like, oh, I'm from New York, where are you from? And you say Queens, and and I'm like, where are you from? You know, I say Queens, and I'm like, where are you from? And they're like, Upper East, you know, or yeah, the yeah. Village. I feel like I've just like sold myself as something I'm not. <laughs> Queens has gotten cool, but. If I say I'm from New York and then I meet someone else who's legitimately from the city, which yeah. Queens is not, by the way, the city meaning Manhattan, that's the mm-hmm. city, then you, I, I automatically feel like a loser. Well, it's, like, it's, so you, if this helps you any better, yeah. it is that way for most major cities. The farther you are away from oh, the is city, that true? yeah, the farther you're away from the city, the more global your definition of where you're from. So if I'm in California, where are you from? Chicago. If I'm in Chicago and someone says, where are you from? Yes. I have to say Chicago Ridge which is a south <laughs> suburb of Chicago. And then all of a sudden I have to put on my suburb hat and go, oh, I grew up outside. Do you know Oak Lawn? Hey. By the way, I know Oak Lawn. Yeah, yeah. Of Oak Lawn's pretty big. Like, yeah. Not- yeah, Oak Lawn's relatively large. You know but Chicago Ridge had a mall, so suck it, Smoke Lawn. I used, you know, I went to school in, well, I say well, Chicago, you went to Northwestern, but it was yeah. Evanston. It was technically so Evanston, I'm yeah. like, where'd you go to? Oh, I went to yeah. school in Chicago. Oh, where? Northwestern. Yeah. Oh, Evanston. It's yeah. like, it all matters yeah. how far Sorry. you are Sorry, and, and who you're talking to. If I'm in Bangladesh and someone's like, where are you from? I'm just going to say, I, I could even say United States, you really. Could. And they'd be like, amazing. And then they'd probably hurl a tomato at us. I, but if you, yeah. but if you, you know, the closer you get, the more specific you need to get. I'm feeling like, you know... It's like these little things we do to hide behind something to feel cool or just like a tiny thing like the Queens thing, like how yeah. I don't really say Queens. And on my Facebook profile, it says New York, you mm-hmm. know, it might even say New York, New York, which is an even bigger lie if you are actually claiming New York, New York, which really is Manhattan. I'm almost wondering what freedom it might give me to just like really just be Start like, oh, wait, where are you from? Queens. Well, I feel like Queens is well known enough. One of the reasons I typically don't say, yeah. so I did live in Chicago. And did you ever live like in proper no, New York? No, I never did because right, I never lived phony. there. Get off I know, my I'm, show. A fo- I'm a phony. Get off my show. I mean, you're I always a had to take the L <laughs> to 
What street was that in Evanston? Oh, in Chicago. The L stop. Um, yeah, the L. Yeah, the L. Like you Whatever. probably Dempster. Pur- purple, I don't know. Probably the purple line. The purple yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, I'm a purple. Yeah. See, I did nurple. live in the city. I'm a purple nurple. Twelve years or something. You know, right. so that's. <laughs> Joe's did, like, so I did I live did in the my city, time. Nikki. Like, yeah, li- I did some. Unlike time you, there. I did I live did. in the city. Ugh. But but Queens is a large enough and well known enough. I think I feel like most of the boroughs. It's a Queens a borough. Right? It is a borough. Yeah. Yes. I feel like most of the boroughs are, are well known enough that you could say Queens and people would still, uh, for out of towners, would still show respect. And then people who were native New Yorkers would also respect it because you're claiming your own. Right. It's, and, it's when you it's when you have to change the narrative based on who you're talking to. That's when no, they get shifted. It's with. true. And the truth is. Thank God. I mean, literally, thank God I did not grow up in Long Island because that's <laughs> that I could never I could never claim you, that, Joe. You hear, I would that be, Brian, you hear that Brian Morrissey? I would be so. <laughs> who's Brian Morrissey? He's a good friend of mine. We were just visiting him and he's out in Long Island. I, that would be such a lie to say I'm from New York is and that, that I'm from like really East a, Meadow. See, yeah, yeah, so that, that's that's a that's really a thing. If you're from Long Island, you're from Long Island. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hate Long Island. Oh, my God. But I, I, I don't like Queens, but I like it more. More than Long Island. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna be honest. I'm you gonna should. just try to be honest. You should let it be a liberating moment okay. for you. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna do you it. Totally. No, should. I'm gonna do it. I, I. I think it's these tiny dings. These tiny things that. It's like tiny dings that we do to light. I don't know. I'm just. You're catching me in like a very cerebral weekend for some it's reason. Great. And I think I spent too much time trying to clean the house yesterday by myself. But. You gotta, um, clean, you gotta clean your house up, gotta, up I gotta, here. I gotta, you gotta, gotta clean, clean my, that mental I house. Gotta clean, yeah. <laughs> gotta clean my mental house. You gotta get mentally clean, Nikki. You know what someone once said that I'll never forget? Now I'm gonna mess it up. That's, my Listen, ready? So you know many I mean? jokes no, right don't mess it up. Hold on, hold on. Um, let's see, okay. Uh, my head is a dark room where negatives are developed. It's very Isn't cool. Isn't that interesting? It's very cool. Am I, am I getting too deep for no, I the Joe quote, and Joe? No, I want okay. to quote Lex Luthor and okay. say, get out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so your, okay. your mom's still in Queens? My mother's in Queens. Uh, my brother just moved back in with her. Ooh. That is going to be something. It's a sitcom waiting to happen. It's really, it's a something. Well, you, what's great is you need to, you need to take those experiences. You need to write about them. Cause I'm you also, write about you work, you work at uh, DreamWorks television out here. Yeah. I work at DreamWorks TV and I do, I do TV for kids and family. You yeah. know, I do honestly like, you know, GI Joe is a cartoon. I, I only do live action, mm-hmm. but like, where is that stuff for kids these days that like you and I grew up on? Like I remember coming home from school, I'd get home about like two forty five, three o'clock. I loved G.I. Joe. I watched it every single day, every mm-hmm. single weekday. And then, you know, you, you go on for the day and you watch like Facts of Life, Family Ties, mm-hmm. Different Strokes, Three's Company. Like, where are those shows that are just fun family stuff? For kids by adults. True. Yeah. And that, I think that's a lot of maybe, yeah. maybe what we're saying is missing because so yeah. what I see, and I don't have any children, but you work in the I field. I don't have is, any children either. Is, I have a dog. Is, like yeah. You, and, like and, if, you guys. yeah and if they, and leave is amazing. Mm-hmm. And if they catch me watching too much kids TV, I have to register. But <laughs> where, what, what I do see a lot of is like four much. kids by kids, you know, or starring kids, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. it's, it's that, oh, we need to talk to them on their same level stuff. But I always thought with G.I. Joe, even though it obviously it was cartoon, right. with Transformers even, although they had, a, they had a kid sidekick in there, but they were adult mm. robots, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Thundercats were pretty much all adults, the main focus of it, although mm-hmm. they had a couple kids, was that you were aspiring, to, you, were, yeah, you were aspiring to be the older character. You were, you were yeah. like, as a kid, you were role playing as Batman. No one wanted to be Robin. In fact, that was, that's true. in comics, that was one of the big, like, they, they introduced Robin for kids to identify with, but then they found, the, the, the editors and the, the publishers of Batman found, that, yes, Robin was great and people liked him, but the kids still loved Batman. They wanted to be Batman. Robin was always Robin. just kind of lame. He was like this little, like, twink sidekick. Yeah. That's really what he was. Yeah. He wasn't, there was nothing cool about Robin. Well, well, yeah, you know, Dick Grayson, it's also in the week that they just revealed Batman's wang in the comics. Really? <laughs> yes. We're addressing this hot comic topic right now. Yeah, comic book came out last week. Wait, it's got Batman's genitals, uh, genitals in shadow, but they're clearly defined. It sold like wait, hot literally. Cakes. You're talking about right now, like right this week? now. It's called a book called Batman Damned. It sold like hot. It's cakes. like Batman Damn. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, it yeah. impressive? So for or? years, yeah, you know, yeah. So but for years he ran around with Dick, and now he's showing it. Oh my god! Yeah, Dude, yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. But we're off wow. we're off the GI Joe topic. Let's come but back I to think. Topic. 
the thing is that kids, I, I thought that there's a thing about kids aspiring to be that. And I think there's a, there's a lesson yeah. there. Um, one of the anecdotal things you hear is that like, kids aren't in a rush to get their driver's license, you know, to is get it, like that freedom. Are you, oh, you've, yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah. We're, and what? it's a little bit different these days because things with like Uber and stuff, you can get around uh, a little well, easier. Well, that's true. But there was a long time where they were saying that there wasn't this rush. You know, kids, kids aren't, they're definitely not moving out of their parents' house anymore. And I don't know why I'm talking about all this kid stuff because I don't, I don't, have, I don't have any, uh, say, but, but kids are staying at well, home longer, right? Kids also come back. Yeah. Like that boomerang and is it, thing. And, and is maybe a part of it because they're not aspiring to, to be these adult roles when they're younger. I don't know. I, I don't know I don't the answer know. to that. I think there is. I mean, you could get me started on, on a whole thing. So but I, do you guys do? Yeah. Do you guys do like focus testing and things like that? Like, how do you? How Joe, do you, we're digital. We do <laughs> the focus <laughs> testing is us. Or if somebody in our department so, has kids, we bring them. So, so you, so you know that something hits just be, after it hits. Well, you know, we do a couple of things. I mean, we do YouTube shows, right? That's how DreamWorks TV started. It's like a digital yeah. division, and. Uh, and, you know, with YouTube, it's like, you, that's the, the great and the scary part of it. It's like, you know when something works right away mm -hmm. because you see the numbers. You mm -hmm. see how many viewers watched it, how many views it got, and you can even tell how long someone watched it. Right. Right? Like, when, when do yeah. they drop off? Um, for me, most of my stuff is more, you know, kind of long form stuff that's going to be for, you know, Netflix and Hulu and, and, you know, all that stuff. So that is a that is a, an algorithm that I don't even understand. That I'll that we're still figuring out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that to me is crazy. That whole thing. But yeah, I, I feel like with the YouTube stuff, we clearly know. Like, I will know that day. Or do people like this, or do they just say, "Forget this. This is uninteresting to me." That's wild. And it's kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I work, you know, coming from digital marketing, th yeah. that's my, you know, my nine to five is, yeah, there's an immediate reaction to stuff that, you know, is like, oh, well, no one cares about that. I, I'll tell you something. I do a show once a week called Your Comments Come to Life that this great, awesome guy, Alex Hoffman, started and I took over for him. Where can people find that? Uh, just DreamWorks TV. Like YouTube channel? YouTube channel. And it's called Your Comments Come to Life. And basically, and it's all animated and we animate the entire show in, uh, that that week mm. in three days three days south park style three days yes and then the fourth day we like put the show together and the release is friday and it's basically we say hey we want to hear all your wacky comments about fantasy so send us you know well, you know what do you want to see a fantastical football eat a walrus a fit you know whatever oh it's great and we do it and i know right away it's <laughs> this because this week's isn't doing well i know right away <laughs> and this week's was fan it was fantasy yeah and or no, it wasn't. I'm sorry. This week's was the fall, so it was about like leaves, sky, you know, leaves, yeah, you know, yeah. jumping out of an airplane, and you know, all crazy weird stuff. And people clearly don't care about leaves. Joe, who knew? Who I knew? thought everyone uh, liked leaves. Well, listen, everyone laments it. Yeah. Everyone says, well, "I miss fall. I miss spring. Right. It's summer and hot." So, but now we're finally giving you leaves, and you don't want to watch it. I, I mean, I've literally given you leaves for two and a half minutes. Yeah, and nobody. You, two, you can't even give you two and a half minutes. Two and a half even minutes. Two and a half minutes to watch the leaves change, especially if you live in California. Yeah, they or you said, live in one of these hot no. states. You never get to see no, the leaves. They said, change. "Leave me alone with your leaves." But um bum. That's the kind of comedy that Nikki Levy brings to no, her please. live I, I really, show. I really hope it's better comedy Don't than that. Don't tell my mother. Can I so, tell you about Don't Tell My Mother for one second? Yeah, we're so, going to talk about it. Oh, you want to talk about well, it? Well, I want you to plug it. Tell, tell our well, listeners no, all about I mean, Don't Tell My Mother. You know, I, you know, it's been going on a long time. Like How many years? Almost seven years seven now. Seven years. And it's basically, yeah, like these amazing, amazing actors telling true stories. So, you know, like this show on October 12th is a benefit for the Gay and Lesbian Center. Mm -hmm. It's at their Theater of the Renberg. And it has like the lead guy from Crazy Ex Girlfriend, Josh. Awesome. His real name is Vince, and it's him. And then the new, um, the, the one of the new stars of NCIS. Amazing. In the past, you've had people like well, Jen yeah. Kober, who's Jen been a guest Kober. on Joe on Joe. I she's just, oh, she, she did. Oh, yeah. I just was Jen on was, was Jen on Friday. Oh yeah. Oh, she's, she's, she she came on Joe and Joe. Listen, so awesome. you remember Jen Southern hilarious. She's amazing. She's a mainstay she's crazy. of the show. I love yeah, her. but we've had um, uh, the mom from Growing Pains. Oh, Joanna Kearns. Joanna Kearns is Terry Hatcher, Terry Hatcher from, from Lois and Lois Clark. And Clark. Um, um, we had uh, we've had Lance Bass. We've had um, you've had Diane Neal from Law and Order SVU. She's incredible. Um, oh, we've had so many. I mean, Stephanie Beatrice from Brooklyn Nine Nine. I mean, it's Kate McKinnon from SNL. Kate McKinnon did your show in New York. I mean, Kate, there's Tracy there's, Ellis Ross. Name a from, bigger uh, name a bigger name in comedy. Female name in comedy right now. She's amazing. Than yeah, Kate McKinnon. She's. Legit. Oh, Wendy McClendon Covey. Wendy McClendon Covey. From, um... 
Well, from she's currently on the Goldbergs, but she's, she's, on the she's Goldbergs. A, she'll always be Reno nine one one to me. She's she's ridiculously yeah. talented. Um, before she, before she passed, the uh, the grandmother from um, uh, Everyone Loves Raymond, Doris Roberts. Doris Roberts. No, it's legend. It's, it's, it's yeah, and it's cool. And then we're doing the show in New York on November fifteenth as part of WNYC's Women's Work It Festival. Awesome. And we're having I don't know if any of your I know we have New York listeners. I know we. Yeah, do. I don't know if any of your viewers like Orange Is the New Black. I I love that show. Yeah. yeah. Um. So there's Alicia. Reiner. Awesome. She's amazing. Um, and uh, you also had from Transparent, you had Amy Landecker. She's the best. Amazing. She's, the yeah, daughter she's of incredible. Chicago radio legend John Records Landecker. Absolutely. Yeah. Is Amy Landecker. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And she actually does a lot of cool stuff with her dad. Yeah. They're, they're, she's, they do. A, she's a really nice person. Well, and she's like yeah. a famous voiceover yeah. artist before yeah. yes, even yes. getting the Transparent show. It's it, no, it, basically. It's, 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 and then Dan Savage did it when we did it in yeah. uh, New York. Just recently. That's amazing. Dan Savage is like a generational voice for so many people in and out of the LGBT community because he just speaks to the truth about health and and lifestyle positivity. He's He's so great. He's so And I'll tell you, like performing with him last last June, we did it for Gay Pride in New York, Mm -hmm. and he was not at all what I expected because I've been – I mean, I – before listening to Dan Savage, I, w- I read Dan Savage as a kid I growing w- up in Queens. I was reading him in The Onion. I was in the, reading. In the I read him. Okay, babe, I'm gonna predate you. I read. I was reading him in The Village Voice in the 80s. Holy or, or, cow! I, mean, I guess it could have been early 90s, but I'm talking The Village yeah, Voice. That's crazy. Yeah. Savage yeah, yeah, yeah. Love. I mean, yeah, this guy yeah, was. Yeah, it was in. It was in The Onion in, at U of I. Queer sex. Can you say sex? I yeah. Sex on the map. And and even more importantly, to be honest, he put the idea that you can ask for help and advice. Anybody. Yes, I mean, literally anyone. That is what's so important, is that is destigmatizing. And it took, like questions. Just yes. like, I have questions. And, and honestly, meeting him, first of all, he's gorgeous. And the guy doesn't have an ounce of body fat. He's just gorgeous. He's just like in the most amazing shape. But Enough what, about me. Enough yeah. about me. What about Dan Savage? He is so like, he's just so... Uh, I don't know. He's very quiet. He's very unassuming. I, I've seen him on on uh, like yeah. Bill Maher. He does. And yeah. I, when I first saw him, which was relatively recently, first time I saw him live in person, it was unassuming and not the person I expected. Not to at all. And I'll tell you, there was someone who had, I guess, recently like come out as I don't even quite know what. By the way, that was like working on this, mm-hmm. sh- this show that we did in New York, and he took this person. I don't know what their gender is, but he took this person aside, and they just had this conversation for like five minutes. And you can see Dan was just laser focused on this person yeah. i literally mean like what he said to this person clearly made an impact i mm-hmm. mean it was it, I, I, honestly like it, he he's is, he's incredible he's doing like, such he really great cares. stuff if in in regardless of whether if you're a champion of lgbt rights or issues or if you're or if you're just a friend or even if you're like uh, or you if know, you hate or, the or, lgbt yeah, yeah. people or just e- well or even if you're just like cuz there's there's an element of people that are just like you know I just don't want to deal with it but they don't you know and 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 well if it doesn't affect them then sure right exactly you, what you what you got to do is you got to recognize that someone like him and someone like your show which promotes positivity the positive aspect needs to be celebrated totally. and it needs to be recognized that this that you're doing a good thing when you can help anyone in any form with that they're struggling with their identity yeah of become course. a better person and shape that Absolutely. it's just so powerful but you know what everyone does get gi joe gi joe gi joe yeah, gi joe okay um well i'll tell you what so today's episode we're watching it's called the sword Yes. And there is some hot, hot ninja action. Okay. All kinds of ninjas. And the welcome return of a fan favorite, Scarlet. Scarlet. Comes back to GHO. And this is important because... Scarlet is my beautiful, wonderful fiance. Shout out, Scarlet. She's the best. I, I'm was, engaged, guys. Yeah, oh, guys, I'm engaged. You yeah. can't see my ring, but I'm engaged. And you can't see the smile on her face either. I know. Because, or actually, she's you so may cute. be able to see it. It's She's beaming. so cute, guys. I can't it's beaming. It. She's amazing. That's okay. I've and only waited 40 years to find yeah, someone who didn't right. make Listen, me crazy. It's we, cool. Hey, it's good. you know, sometimes it's worth the wait, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, everything in its own time. Yeah. So we, uh, we were prepping for this, and and I it was not <laughs> planned at all. And I was like, all right, what, what are we going to watch today? And I hit play, and... Uh, yeah, Scarlet's all over. I'm like, that's absolutely perfect timing. It's absolutely perfect timing. Scar Joe. Yeah. So remember, everyone, if you're if you're in California, come on out and see the show. If you are in New York, that's in November. Yeah, the Octo- the uh, LA show is October 12th. 
and it's just don't tell my mother dot com. Yep, exactly. And then the uh, L.A. or sorry, the New the New York show. The New York show is November fifteenth, and those tickets are going to go on sale soon yes. as part of the WNYC's Work It Festival, W E R K, which is really cool. It celebrates women in podcasting, but really it celebrates women's voices. That's amazing. And all it- different, all intersectional. I mean, literally the ages, the 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 races the background the voices i every it's just such a cool and the tickets fest. for that show is it through the work at festival it, it um it's actually at the bell house so it'll be through the bell house website okay. the bell house is a really cool comedy venue in brooklyn I and mean, you'll have links at don't tell my i'll have links right up there yep and make sure you go online and follow nikki at dtmm show that's don't tell my mother show that's on twitter yep, twitter facebook instagram, instagram the facebook, whole nine yards yep. yeah and while you're on there find me at joe on joe pod or send me an email, everyone. Email me to joeandjoepod at gmail.com. Let me know what you think of the show. Let me know if you want to be on the show. I love meeting people, love having guests, love having remote guests. And I love having Nikki Levy sit right next to me. She's very funny. She's a very talented writer. And we're going to enjoy this episode today. Woo-hoo! When was the last time you watched a cartoon about ninjas? About ninjas specifically? Specifically well, about ninjas. Well, specifically because of my work, right? I actually had to. <laughs> oh my God, maybe more, God. maybe sooner than you think. Uh, I had to watch some uh, like Japanese anime thing. Oh, yeah. And uh, sorry to disappoint you. No, but it, no, the, it's the, 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 Look, there were ninjas. I love it. But well, it, then you're, they were subtitled. So maybe, that's even that better. Count? Then okay. you're, you're warmed up for this. So well, I'm, I'm excited. So everyone, put your DVDs. And remember, this, uh, this season we are watching in... Uh, in order, the, the best we can tell, a broadcast order, not necessarily in disc order. So we're because the discs are a little all over the place. So we're jumping around, and now we're at the sword. It's the third track on that first disc for season two of the DIC episodes. So everyone, oh, and you know what? Don't forget, go to patreoncom slash Pod and see how you can support the show. And remember to tune into Dreamer Comics podcast. It's where comic books become reality with Omar Spahi. Yeah, you look like you were about to say something. No, you look very I, I, I You're think like, if someone is passionate about something like you are about Joe and GI, GI, Joe, Joe <laughs> and GI, L- lower GI, upper <laughs> GIs and Joe, then support it. This is great. I mean, I think what you're doing is so cool. Well, it's I, get, I love that you're diving deep into I get, Joe. I get, I get a lot of that inspiration from you, Nikki. So without any further ado, we are going to watch The Sword. Yay! Here we go. So we got a cold open. On a kid's cartoon. That's really cool. Isn't it Does weird? everyone here know what a cold open is? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but okay. but like back then, I don't think I knew it. So this is Storm Shadow. Previously, we had seen him uh, on this season only in the um, credits. So now this is, uh, this is exciting. And okay. Snake Eyes, who is a fan favorite, has never really gotten a feature episode until this one. Um, Wait now, remind me which one's Snake Eyes? Snake Eyes is the guy in the black and the blue. Okay, his yeah. his sword brother. Those two dudes on the mountain that are oh, just yeah, getting blown yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But Snake Eyes doesn't talk, right? So Storm Shadow, that guy, has to yeah. do all the talking. Yeah. Um, that is a GI Joe um, like glider toy that they were selling at the time. Ooh. They use it so much on the series. It is every episode. Joe, I actually think so. I was a huge. A huge tomboy. I actually uh-huh. think I had that glider really? as, a, as a toy. You may have. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, almost positive. Have. Yeah, well, you, um, I'm a couple years older than you. Yeah. And this would have been. You're 100 years older than me. I'm, I'm sorry. By a couple, I meant to a couple decades. Yeah. And when I was getting out by of this. By a couple, you mean 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was getting out of this, that's when they introduced this era. And okay. that would have been your, you yeah. would have been in the, the heat of this. Yeah. Absolutely would have I been in the heat of this. I remember it. was like yeah. gray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it actually flew. Yes. Like could actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. Yeah, so now we go into uh, the opening credits after so they cool. found this. That was the Night Creeper leader. He's the head of the Cobra Ninjas. There's Cobra Ninjas, and this episode introduces... Cobra's for the bad guys, right? Yeah, yeah. This episode introduces a whole cadre of G.I. Joe ninjas, which we had previously never seen. We'd only seen Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, and they were on opposing sides. Well, now Storm Shadow's with G.I. Joe, yeah. and they haven't explained it yet. They do later on in the episode. Um, they do, and they, they explain in the comics and all that stuff, but they just wanted to pair them up. How many G.I. G. Joe theme songs have there been? Um, this is the this is not the most popular one. Yeah, I yeah. don't know this theme song. Yeah, this I know G.I. Joe, real, real American, American hero, hero fighting in Cobra and Destro. Yeah, G.I. Joe, yeah. G.I. Joe, American. Yeah. I is, love that. This is what we refer to as the wrestling theme. This sounds this sounds like a wrestling intro theme. You it know? does, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, like we're watching Glow, but yes, yeah, it's a, animated. Totally. Yeah, that's what got to in get the 80s, tough. which is kind of Glow. Yo, Joe, <laughs> and then they. Um, 
there was the next iteration of cartoon. Each each cartoon had its own theme song, but this is the mo- wow. the second most popular one. So the sword written by Ted Peterson and Stephen Steve Hayes. Hayes. By the way, I work you know I work in kids TV mm-hmm. obviously right, and I've never heard of those people. Where well, where have I mean they gone? this was thirty you know thirty years they ago. They might be dead. We don't know. No, well, there are. What's funny? There are a lot of people. Uh, that that Are dead? that abs- no well the names you still know like they were comic really? book writers yeah or yeah okay wait Shh, I this is it. ninja force it's um there's a tibang and there's budo he has a very small waist nunchuck and yeah. dojo oh. that's scarlet finally a girl that's scarlet i was gonna say she's hot yeah well that's your lady's name she's can i tell you something she doesn't look too dissimilar to Scarlet. Yeah, see, is is um uh Scarlet? Yeah, is Scar- but is, is Scarlet's her given name, right? Scarlet's yeah, her real name. Scarlet Rose. S- Scarlet is sh- her name is Shanna. No, and Scarlet's her nickname because of her red hair. Okay, Scarlet doesn't have red hair in real life. Yeah. So this is Scarlet, and this is her first r- big appearance on this episode. She was in an earlier one, but she like. They, How they is she played related it more to for Joe? Last. How is she related to Joe? Well, she's well. They're all they're on the team called. Okay, G. so I she's Joe. on the team. Yeah, the team is called Jason, and that's General Hawk, and that's his new. But look. she's related because she's she's on one the, of them. She's one of the okay, G.I. Yeah, 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 yeah. G.I. Joe guy is or a bad is guy. the team name. The, in the seventies and sixties, it was a dude, and then in this iteration, it's the team is called yeah. G.I. Joe. So everyone has their own unique name. Yeah. So these Cobra Ninjas, uh, they're, they're tracking down this thing that's got basically the Infinity Gauntlet from that from the Avengers movie. Totally. You see that the Avengers movie? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's basically the, the Infinity but Gauntlet. This gauntlet can lead us to it. Guys, why in old cartoons and maybe it's still now, all the bad guys have a voice like this? Yeah. Ninjas. Ninjas. Because I think, well, this show, this epi- interesting this episode about. actually has really, I'm not a fan of this uh, iteration of Storm Shadow because mm. he's Japanese and it's a real kind of racist. Really? Yeah. And it's, and I try not to put like too much of a current, like okay. current, like c- correct casting kind of eye on yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the previous iteration I like because he was just, he was soft spoken. He was very much like, Oh, G.I. Joe. This one is like really chop socky. I just want to say that Scarlet has very large bosoms. Sure. In this. You know, they got appeal to the kids. Okay, okay. See, listen. So you got two with one shot. Oh, my God. But don't get cocky. I mean. I will say that's this. That's not good. Can I just step out of this for one second yeah. and tell you the new version of Shira? Because you DreamWorks it? is doing new Shira yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, Is way more boyish than old Shira. Oh yeah, the fans are That's, upset. The fans are really upset. Fans are very I know, upset because watched. they needed to fap to it apparently. Yeah, I yeah, want to say I upset. I appreciate Scarlet's Storm Shadow just even the odds. Well, go, I'll say this. This season um so far the episodes have been better than the previous season. Mm. I'm not a huge fan of this episode plot-wise, but the animation is better this whole yeah, season. It looks Everyone great. looks better. Who's they, this? They, that is um a robot called Overkill. Um, he's like the head. There's there's a battalion of robots that Cobra uses for soldiers, and it's a way for the cartoon to destroy the enemy without hurting humans. So he's the head of those guys. That's a Night that Creeper leader. And they're after this sword, um, just because it's a MacGuffin. That's kind of where right. we're at with with the show. And I think it's really an episode. This is really just an excuse to to like introduce to to the kids watching. The Ninja Force, yeah. which was the GI Joe guys, yeah. and the, and um, they were getting into very much um, team based toys. Mm-hmm. So they had introduced Battle Force Two Thousand. They had introduced all these sub teams. So was the so whole you wanted reason co- for this cartoon to sell 100%. consumer products? Yes, absolutely. Wow, totally, totally, hundred percent. So I have a feeling the rationale behind these sub teams, like the Ninja Force, like um, Sky Force. Is if if you have the whole team and you have fifteen people in in the toy line, it's going to be harder for me as a kid to collect all fifteen. But if you make a smaller subset and you only have five people, then I can get all five. You follow? So mm-hmm. it's so it's an easier way for kids to kind of put together these set units of yeah. toys. So when that, so instead of them selling three and a half units, they would then sell five units. Totally. Versus, you know. 
no kid That's had every single GI Joe right. kid. I would but, think, but now the you can get these smaller sub teams. I think of the I would think of the opposite. They'd want a bigger team so kids can try to get the bigger team. Well, they had the bigger team. That was the thing. That's that's what was smart, I think. That's what was smart about the okay, marketing okay. And, 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 and branding of it okay. is there was the large team. So they did introduce uh, this year, it was, let's, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know, but let's say 20 yeah. new characters wow. or 20 single figures. But within that, you got this sub team of ninjas. Okay. Last year, you had the sub team of Sky Force, right? Yeah. So that it gives people a, a smaller bar to like, like quote, Creeper collect them all. You want you want more storm shadow, don't you? Yeah. The problem is Stink Guy's being mute. Stink Guy's doesn't. He doesn't. Talk. No, he got he got his vocal cords. Scarlet. Hi guys, what kept you? I love her. <laughs> Who voices her? I don't know, her? but that's amazing. She's great. Hey, she's, I may not be a ninja, but, she, but I am a GI Joe. Yeah, she's a GI Joe. It's but, like God. But. Jesus. They're just such jerks to her. They're such jerks to her. This is Those ninjas. They all think they're so macho. Yeah, they think they're so, so macho, great. but meanwhile, she's probably yeah, the one with watch, the power. Yeah, but watch, well, but wait till you see what happens. You're not going to be happy with okay, what listen, happens listen. here. Uh, things don't go well. Now, if you notice, they're on gliders, uh, like wind gliders. Right. She's got a jetpack on, <gasps> and her jetpack doesn't run out of fuel. And she going to fall to her death. So we're going to go to commercial Wait, with, with a gravity break. She's not going to die, right? Today's file card feature is on the Cobra Bug Driver, codenamed Secto Viper. Formed as a dedicated unit to patrol the shoreline of Cobra Island, Secto Vipers are unique specialists in amphibious operations and marine surveillance. Every Secto Viper is assigned a specific sector of shoreline and is required to know every square inch of it, as well as the topology of the ocean floor that abuts it. They are thoroughly familiar with every amphibious landing craft currently in use by the armed forces of the world and can recite by rote their quote soft points and areas of vulnerability quote secto vipers are too conscientious they're always speeding over the dunes or creeping about under the surf off-duty cobra personnel can't spread a towel on the beach to catch some rays without being reduced by an overzealous secto viper looking to make brownie points with his superiors not the greatest thing in the world for morale i don't know about the secto viper guys i gotta be honest it does not have the kind of detail in a figure that I uh, normally enjoy. It, looking at these pictures over at yojo.com, it looks like a real, it looks like a knockoff figure. Like there's detail on the sculpt, but then they didn't do the paint. Uh, the paint application is just generic as heck. It's yellow and black with a couple uh, orange slash reddish piping that, that goes around the side and there's detail on his thighs that if they had done a good paint application it would have looked cooler but it's not and so it just looks like a real cheap knockoff figure it's really disappointing i like the helmet the helmet's cool it's like a full clear bubble helmet and that's easy and, and cheap the pistol's crazy like a crazy laser pistol it doesn't look like any type of actual uh, military weapon and then the bug i have always hated the bug I think the bug looks terrible. It is just a chunky, boxy block of blah. It's got wheels, but it's supposed to be an underwater thing, I guess, so it can ride on the, the floor of the ocean. I guess that makes sense, but it just... I honestly don't like anything about the bug. I, I'll, I'll find this. Here's a positive. I like the color scheme for the bug, the green stuff. I think that's really cool. And uh, I will say that I like the bubble part of the front of the bug. I like like the bubbles because it makes it look like actual deep sea diving bubbles, you know, like stuff out of uh, the movie, The Abyss and things like that. The rest of it though, the hottest of garbage. Like, I'm sorry, Secto Viper, you're up there with one of the worst ones that I think we've ever done. I appreciate the fact that no one else in Cobra likes you. So I have that in common. So Secto Viper, uh, whoever you are, wherever you're spying on someone, we salute you. Scarlet dies? Nikki Levy, what do you do? You think they're gonna kill Scarlet in this episode? I hope not. No, they're not gonna kill Scarlet. Okay, because. <laughs> but I'm just saying like, a, that would be fuck. That would a, be messed up. In a up. wind-powered glider, they catch up to her and they 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 don't die. This is really. <laughs> I gotta be honest. This is really fueling how unimportant and insignificant women have been treated. I'm sorry, but it's true. I cannot. It sucks. I cannot disagree with you for this episode, but I will say that as a blanket, if if uh, if we were to do, if I were to show you, if I were to show you one of the early season stuff, 
G.I. Joe was super inclusive. It she was? was she's I I, I I need to go back and watch, but I think she has the very first line of dialogue in any G.I. Joe cartoon. She she's the first person you see. She's in a sky right. striker and okay. she buzzes the, the the cockpit and is like Top Gun style, okay, like right. I'm bad and I'm the king. Mm-hmm. She's huge, and then Lady J they brought in later on, yeah, and amazing. Okay. They're they're really inclusive of okay. them. In this iteration, yeah, later '80s, early '90s, yeah. not as much. So they I must agree. Have I agree. Oh, it changed production company. It Somebody went to changed. DIC up in yeah. Canada. It's a, a lot of it changed. Um, yeah, DIC. Oh, you're Deek. familiar? Yeah. Deek. Do you know what it stands for? In, in the no, the, but the, I, it was the, on the backs of all my sorry, cartoons. I the, the derogatory term was "do it cheap." <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So uh, that that's I think one of the biggest step downs in this yeah. era is that they don't do a great job of balancing that. And they did yeah. in the early ones. They absolutely did. Without well, and now, you know, there's like Supergirl that's on. Yeah, now, I mean, today. Supergirl's having the first trans character. Yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's playing um, Dream Girl from the Legion of Superheroes uh, Ancestor. Little little spoiler for you kids out yeah. there. So these are all robots. And they're going, I believe they're going to uh, scale the mountain. Oh, oh, they're just blowing through the mountain. Yeah. And they're called Bats, Battle Android Troopers. Cool. So did you watch the show or did you play with the toy or did you... I watched the show and yeah. I had the toys. Did you have the toys? Do you yeah, remember well, anything about glider. who you had? Well, besides the glider? If you name them, I could probably tell you, but I... Did I was you have like any big... of the female figures then? No, it doesn't yeah. sound like... Oh, you did. I so maybe I Lady did. J or Jinx. She had a red... Um, she, had a re- she was a red ninja. No, I did not have that. The Baroness? She wore a black bad cobra I might have had the Baroness. All black with a red To, to be totally thing. honest, Joe, at this time in my life, I was really into collecting um, electronics. That was really? really yeah. Like what? What kind of electronics? Um, do you remember when like the first mini TV came out? Like yeah. a mini TV mm-hmm. like that? Yeah. It, I would collect all kinds of Walkmans. Like I was I, obsessed and I would display them in my room. Like Really? Sp- like just... Disp- like dis- yes, I was... I displayed them. That's amazing. Like, like I loved... like. Like my prized possession was like I don't want to take away from the show, but no, my no, prized no. possession was. That's how the remember, show works. We, do you we, remember we, when we talk the, a little about Joe? Then we go off on tangents. Do you remember when the yellow waterproof Sony? Yes, yes. You remember I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, right? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. It opened I do. and then it opened and it was waterproof. Mm-hmm. Why you need a waterproof Walkman? By the way, I literally have no idea. I don't know. I saved up for that for so long. That was like eighty five dollars. Yeah. That's a lot of That's money. A lot of money. Um, and I had a date in fourth grade. Why my mom let me have a date in fourth grade? I don't know. Adam Levine from Hebrew school. And From I Maroon swear, five? To, no, different Adam Levine. Oh, I know this guy ended up being. Boat. I know. Although they they chose Maroon Five for the Super Bowl, really? I think that's amazing. It's He's terrible. Incredible. Well, this Adam Levine, I will just tell you, this Adam Levine now works in the sheet metal union in Queens. He didn't amount to a ton, by the way. He was a bad. Oh. He was a bad boy even then. Oh, listen to me. He, I had a little mini TV, and when he left my house, I had no mini TV. He stole your. He mini stole TV. it. Yeah, and he was such a bad kid. Like, why would I have been surprised? What? Adam Levine. He stole it. You owe Nikki Levy a TV. He, you know, he really does. I'm telling you, he, he really took does. It. Cause Sheet workers union else? out of Queens, whatever what? your local is. Yeah. You got a thief working yeah, for you. Yeah. He d- calling you out, Adam Levine of Maroon Five. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just gonna say it's Adam Fine. Levine of Maroon, Maroon Five. Well, then if he was a Maroon Five, he could get me a lot more than my. Yeah. Well, he can get you a real TV, TV now. back. I had a, a little TV. mini TV. You can give me a real TV show. I had a little mini TV that the the LCD screen was actually reverse, and you watched it in a mirror. <laughs> Is that how what? yours worked? No, no. Mine was just a regular thing. It, it was a little, so it was a little pop-up thing, right? But the way they got, the, they got it to work is you, Wait, so it was. I've seen this. Yeah. So it was like, so picture, um, we're looking at my recording device, which is like a, a zoom, like an H4. Yeah, yeah. It's like a square like that big. I know. I've seen this yeah, before. And one of one of the sides popped up and it was like maybe a 45 degree angle. I've, I've seen this. And you I know would what watch about. it in the mirror, the reflective mirror, because the, the way that the signal came in, it came in backwards. So you, when you watch it, you watch it normal, but because it bounced off a mirror that you were watching, you would sit it on your desk and watch it off the mirror. Do you remember crazy? Or, Eddie's? or the mirror, or the mirror was the part that popped up, and the you know what? I bet you I know what you're was. talking about. The, the screen was built into the TV, and it was reversed, so you looked at the mirror. That's okay. exactly what it okay. was. Okay. You looked at the mirror, and, and and but the mirror was the part that popped mm-hmm. up and down. Yeah, that's totally what it was. That's really. Cool. And I used to watch the A Team on it because no one else oh, in my family wanted to watch the A Team. So that I would go up to my bedroom and lay on my bed and watch the eighteen. Do you know what my, my family watched? TV. The one thing that we watched all together. What's that? Married with children. 
Yeah, that show was <laughs> married with children. Show was okay, a, wait, I want to come back to Scarlet. I really like Scarlet. Well, yeah, so Scarlet and the Ninjas, uh, Scarlet. they're 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 on their way to get the sword. Storm Shadow is almost about to fall. Snake Eyes grabs him, and they're they're both. They're going it. So we we really earlier we had a gravity break. We haven't had a gravity break in a long time. What does that mean? That means they go to commercial with the enemy, the the, the point of drama being gravity. And that was a I've big, never heard of that. That's because I because I dubbed it. Seriously? That. Yeah, because it was a big thing they did in the first few seasons. I remember that's a, that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a way to put people in peril without having it be an impending threat of physical violence. Okay. And it's an easier damage um, or easier threat to understand than any kind of like psychological, like, totally. I'm going to come get you. The kid has to understand it, hear it. No, know, no, this person it. might plummet to their death right. or not. But if you get someone falling, it's instant. Oh my gosh, they're going to die. Whether it's someone totally. pushed them or they just fell, either way, it doesn't matter. They're in. They're in. Yeah. And it goes back to the old movie serials. Totally. You know, people going off cliffs, their cars running off the cliff, and then it would blow up in the next when they came back from commercial. So I dubbed it Gravity Break, and we haven't had a gravity break in a long yeah. time. Uh, Actually, I hope Dice I want to see something much greater. Yeah, so Dice and um, Thanks a heap slice, Slice, the they've no found the um, this giant sword that the Night Creeper leader has. I did not have a lot of the ninja guys. I know their names, but I don't. I, I have trouble identifying exactly who's mm. who. I know Tabang and Budo, I believe, are good guys, and Dice and Slice and Dice are the bad guys. Slice and Dice. Yeah. What are these Ginsu knives? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, they were they were the Ninja Force, and and I Ooh, remember who's the, this guy? Uh, well, that's Overkill, but he's been beaten oh, up. Overkill. Yeah, it's, so it's the robot. Yeah, he's been beaten up. They've been. Um, I remember the time feeling like the ninjas were were literally overkill. Like it wasn't, Whoa. I wasn't into it at the time. And I, I dig me some good ninja action, but it just wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea at the time. Yeah. Wait, I have an important question. Yeah. Okay, you go first. Well, no, on your, on your, on your various TVs and electronics. Yeah. What stuff were you watching then? Was it live action? Were you watching other cartoons? Like, like what, what were. Well, the hilarious part was I didn't do anything with them other than have them on display. I really? mean, I was so proud of them. Yes. Like, I mean, like so proud. Like I would take old stereos and put them on display. I just loved That's electronics. What happened to them? I don't besides know. Besides that, besides that stealing Adam them. stealing it. Um, well, we're we're going to go into commercial and be right back. Hey listeners, if you're anything like me, all apologies to your family. I just kidding. It's likely that they made you this way. No, I'm talking about that. I'm always looking for more GI Joe content and I think I found it. Stop what you're doing. Okay, don't stop listening to this podcast. Can't you multitask? And go to Facebook slash Special Mission Force. Brian Wilkins is curating all kinds of wonderful, nostalgic G.I. Joe content, including new pics from his fantastic Instagram page, at Special Mission Force. On his Instagram, he's taking photos of Joe's out in the wild, in the real world, doing stuff. For me, the two things that stand out the most are his variety of characters that he takes pictures of and, like, the depth of field in these pictures. It's just a wonderful job of directing focus for you. I think you really will enjoy his work. So like him on Facebook, follow him on Instagram and Twitter, and get ready for his website, SpecialMissionForce.com. He's a name to watch in the GHO game, so get on board now. Now back to the show. Do you still have any of them? No. I mean, my mom's house, God knows what's in there. I'm sure yeah. she has some old stuff. But um, but no, I didn't actually watch TV on that little mini TV that I was so excited to get. I watched TV in our living room. So we didn't have cable because uh -huh. we lived in an area of Queens that was almost like between, between Queens and Long Island. And like everybody got cable, but we were in this dead zone where, I don't know, we, we just didn't get it for so long. From from your description, I, I I get why you don't tell people you were from Queens. Yeah, see what I mean. So we were like, so like I didn't do Nickelodeon, like I didn't have any of that stuff. So we would just watch in this in this TV, you know, this like boob tubey TV thing mm -hmm. in our living room. And I'm telling you what I would watch. I would watch. Here's what I would watch. I would watch um, the Jetsons. I loved. I mean, literally loved. Mm. Uh, I loved Alvin and the Chipmunks. Um, I loved He Man. Like he -Man. I loved He Man. He Man was great. Um, hold on, I want to see this. Um, I think I just blew himself up with a smoke bomb. And by the way, we can't go any further. Wow. This is similar in plot yeah. to the sh episode called Excalibur, where Storm Shadow found the fabled Excalibur and it gave him superpowers. That's essentially the storyline we're getting here. And I gotta this say, I don't outfit. appreciate that. You, this guy's what? Who's that guy with the outfit? With the that's he's the Night Creeper leader. The I Night Creepers were 
You do think he's gay? Only because he's dressed so well. Like, sure, so much well, better sure than well everybody impeccably else. Impeccably purple. Better yeah. than Scarlet. Yeah, impeccably sure. purple. You're a worm bait, snake eyes. We, we had a recent um, uh, revelation that I think that the Cobra guys have a much better design sense because they don't have to kind of... The G.I. Joe guys kind of tend to rely on a basic camouflage look. Yeah. And Cobras can go everywhere with it. I mean, the Cobras do look way better. Yeah. Yeah. They really do. So here's a question for yes. you. If you could be a member of the G.I. Joe or Cobra team, yeah. who would? Uh, what would you be? What would your specialty be? And we'll come up here's with a name for you. Here's what I would be. I'll, forget this I'll have to think of my name. Oh, uh, look the way, by the way, we stand. He's like, I will, like, it's like a, totally. he's doing like a, like a Mick Jagger rooster. Like, I he's will doing. not forget this, Nick, guys, <laughs> as I shuffle across the stage. Doing Madonna Vos move. Yeah. Um, I would be, I would be Nikili's heel. So Achilles heel, but since my name is Nikki, it would be Nikili's heel. Nikili's heel. Nikili's heel. Amazing. So my name would be Nikili's heel. And what, here's what I would do. Yeah. I'm going to take the parts. Joe or Cobra. Oh, I'm going to be Joe. Oh, okay. yeah. I can't. I'm not going to be a bad guy. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> but I'm kind of going to be devious in my move, in my moves. Okay. So Nikili's heel. So what my real strength in real life is, right, is to like kind of like penetrate people's like basically I can break most people down yeah. to like be honest and vulnerable. And it's because I reveal a lot of things. So if I had to be on a team, I'd be on the G.I. Joe team and I would be able to really talk to someone to find out what their weakness is and what are they kind of what like like what's their vulnerability? What's their Mm -hmm. Achilles heel? And I'd act like and only because it's the show. I'm going to act like I'm their friend. So I'm going to help them. But really, because I'm on the G.I. Joe and my, you know, I'm going to try to help Mm -hmm. them. Then I'm going to use that against them. I love it. So that's my Nikki. Achilles heel. heel. Welcome to Joe on Joe. Thank you. Um, I'm going to recommend this. There's a character called Bullhorn. He is the hostage negotiation specialist. Right. He carries a bullhorn. You work with Bullhorn. I'm going to work with Bullhorn, but I'm not going to be as nice as Bullhorn. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You're no. good cop, bad cop. Okay, of course. Like, Bull, yeah. Bullhorn's a good cop. Yeah, Bullhorn the, is 100. Yeah, I'm going to be you're, more. You're, you're I'm going to seem good cop, but really you I'm going to bad cop. You are your own person with your own them. agency. Okay. But cool. I think you guys work together. No, I think we were. No, no, no. You're. Uh, you know what? You're 100% right. Yeah. You know, you're 100% yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. When things get hairy, they call in Nikili's heel. Yeah, Nikili's heel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to find out exactly what, like, what is this person's weakness? Like, what are they, you know, because everybody has trauma. So what is this guy's deal? And then I'm going to use it the F against them. Real quick. Yeah. This is amazing. I didn't think so. So either. earlier, On the other hand, uh, Snake Eyes lost his balance, right? Yeah. Snake Eyes is a master ninja. Yeah. But he came up with Snor- Storm Shadow. And for years, they were on the opposite Every sides of the law. You see Snake Eyes with that balance right there? Earlier, he slipped and fell. Yeah. So Storm Shadow's asking, do you think he fell on purpose so I wouldn't lose face? Mm. that's straight out of the comic books. Wow. Like, that's straight out of the comic books because Snake Eyes cool. is always thinking about the Scarlet honor of his good friend, yeah, Storm Shadow. That's Scarlet, yeah. He's always thinking about the honor of his good buddy, <laughs> Storm great. Shadow. And so to that they brought that into this episode, I think is amazing. Otherwise, I feel like this is kind of a rehash of Excalibur. You know, it's not... It's a little super MacGuffin-y, like it's not as character-y, but that bit of character at the end, I love. That was I absolutely cool. Love. That was cool. Yeah. So that's it. Looking that's G.I. Joe. When, when do you think the last time you uh, watched an episode of G.I. Joe was? Of G.I. Joe? Yeah. It had to be the 80s. Yeah. It had to be the 80s. But I really, I don't like the song, because I love the song from yeah. the 80s. It's the 80s, right? It, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, this, this one started in like 90, was it 90 or 91? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, real America. Well, you know, when we're done with this. We're done with this. I'll play it just for yeah, you. Yeah, we'll talk Listeners, about Listeners, you can go back and listen to one of my old archives yeah. or archives to get a Hayward. taste of that. Um, yeah, this was 1991. No, this was great. So, which G.I. Joe did I watch? You watched uh, probably the Sunbow stuff. Okay. Yeah, which was uh, produced in America, Sunbow, um, with, like, with an American production company, but Japanese. Sunbow. Uh, Jap- yeah, yeah, that's what's weird. We need to figure this out. They are involved in this, and this episode, this season is better than the previous season, yeah. which was all DIC. So maybe they're back on. So yeah, I think so, and I just haven't. Uh, I'm not an investigative reporter. No, I don't have not. that kind of you're time not. in my life. But I'm, I want to figure it out that before we finish these episodes, we'll yeah. knock that out because there's a marked improvement this season. Yeah, it's like they did that. The third. This is the fourth season. So they did the third, and it's like people at Hasbro must have been like, yeah. "Oh boy, we need to bring Sunbow back." Yeah. If in fact Sunbow's supposed to be on here, mm-hmm. I don't know the answer mm-hmm. to that. That might have been a mistake. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But right. either way, uh, I think these episodes are much, much, much more improved. 
and um, I enjoyed having you watch. I loved being here. here. This, this was, was great. This delight. was so nostalgic. Too it was long so and cool. Coming. It yeah. was great. And um, remember, everyone, go to Don't Tell My Mother. Uh, don't tell my mother dot com, right? Yeah. And go, go if you're in, if you're anywhere near LA, come out and catch a show. Yes. You guys do. Uh, Want to say maybe four shows a year in LA? Yeah, we'll be doing a lot more though. Yeah. We'll, we'll be doing more. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. it's wonderful. Starting and in it, January, and there's we'll a be great sense. Of, there's a great sense of community there, and yeah, and great. it just it it's just great. a positive night full of funny ribald tales. Yeah. I mean, obviously October's gay, but usually it's every you know it's everything. But this is yeah, our, yeah. 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 Well, friend. this is because it's it's National Coming Out. Coming month, Out Day. Right? Yeah. yeah. Coming, coming out, out month. Sure. Coming out month. Is it month or day? Is it day? I mean, it's actually coming out day, but like that whole thing of like, yeah, like take yeah, October. Yeah, because then, then June is also like the LGBT, Pride. It's June Pride is totally, month. Yeah, yep. Pride month. So basically, <laughs> Nikki, she does really great stuff, guys. I hope you go out and find yes. her on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff and support her and show her some love. And thank, thank you. For thank me. you, Nikki Lee no, for being great. on Joe on Joe. This was great. And now you, Joe, and Joeing is half the battle. <laughs>